Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Christo and this is Songs of Six, a game which I universally Google as Songs of Sticks, as in the River Sticks, and I don't really know why. But this is Songs of Six, and we're going to be playing this today. It's a great game, um, very, very good fun game. City builder, um, quite high level city builder. Uh, if you're thinking RimWorld, it's much less precise control of your units than that. You control basically what buildings and jobs exist in your city far more than you do uh, the kind of precise jobs that each individual person's going to have and what they're wearing and stuff like that. I am not excellent at this game, um, but I'm fairly, fairly okay. I'm just looking up how much it costs for you because I want to recommend it to you with a price tag associated. This is 24 $25. There is a demo, which is just the main game playable, but a bunch of but a few updates back, I think. Um, it is in early access, but it's it's not feature complete, but it's very, very playable at the moment. Very, very few bugs. It's £19.50 for those of us in the UK. And it's an exceptionally good game, which I cannot recommend to you enough. This is going to be something of a tutorial series in that I will try to explain what I'm doing and why um, as we as we go ahead. But, uh, yeah, apart from that, see how we go. Right, so let's get started. Um, something I should have mentioned is that if you like Dwarf Fortress, um, to me, and this is definitely controversial, um, but this game is, to me, just better Dwarf Fortress. Um, there aren't many things that I get, personally, out of Dwarf Fortress that this lacks. Now, there is one thing that some people will say that this lacks, which is Z-Levels. This does lack Z-levels. Um, but I've never really liked them, to be honest. They, they, it's very difficult to visualize a 3D settlement. But anyway, without too much more preamble, let me just see if I can tip my camera down slightly. Is that better? I don't know. Might be worse, actually. <laughs> anyway, let's play. So we're going to start a new random game is what you want to hit if you're starting a new game. And you set up your difficulty settings. Now, I played... Like three cities before this, um, but I have played them with a mod on, uh, which makes the game easier because it reduces the rate at which goods spoil. Um, conservation, robustness, the rate at which buildings degrade, pacifism, the chance of us being raided, furnishing, the rate at which subjects use up furniture. We're going to keep everything on normal uh, and it will now generate a world and you'll start to see some of the Dwarf Fortress comparisons. So there are five races you can start as. There are eight total, I believe. Um, but members of the 7th and 8th race are very hard to get. Races have different likes, dislikes, qualities, all that kind of stuff. Um, historically, I've always played Dondorians in a kind of dwarfy... They're, they're basically dwarves. Um, but I think we will start with humans this time. <clears throat> Criminal and mentally unstable. That sounds right to me. Um... I think we are, we are going to go for a kind of truly multiracial society. Um, Multi-species society. It calls them species in some places, races in others. Species is obviously the more sensible term, so I'll try and remember to use that one. Um, but they, yeah, they each have quality. So these guys are really good at working in um, uh, wood cutting and raising animals. These guys are really good at farming. These guys are really good at fishing. But we're going to start as normal humans. The final creation of the Astars. Unlike all their other creations, they gave them a free will and a shape of mind. Initially, men were immortal, but after the Second War of the Gods, this was removed as punishment for some who have aligned with the Chaos Lord. So they're excellent scientists and managers. They're good farmers. They learn at a good rate. You can educate them quickly. Um, unremarkable in battle, criminally mentally unstable, limited natural skills, and difficult to please. So, we, because I played before and got to certain levels... Um, I have various titles that I can grant myself. So I will give myself the Breaker of Chains, the Master of Bargains, the Crafter, the Leader, Negotiator. Now, do I want... No, I don't think I want the Ruler. So this makes me... Uh, are we better at buying and selling? Um, oh, actually, is this good? Thousand heavy people? Yeah, so we settle with um, more people and more stuff. Um, and we start with some some science. And this gives us productivity on various things this gives us more bartering and this gives us some just some global happiness we're going to start on a random world random seed random map type generate a world for me 
So here we go. We can see here's the uh, here's the world that we're going to play in, and this world map will continue to matter even after we zoom in. Instantly, I'm drawn down here. Now there used to be a way. No, don't do that. They used to. I think maybe they removed it. But you used to be able to see more about where you were settling. Um, but I think they made it just so that most resources are in most places. Now, we're not going to settle in like a mountain home like I normally do. But we would like some mountains, ideally, for our dwarves to live in. Ooh, this spot is looking quite appealing. We could go here. Still quite a lot of mountain. What about here? There. So we've got some gems, some ore, some stone. It's cold climate, though. It's not ideal. Oh, here's temperate. Lots of gems will give us a good thing to export early on. 37% fertility is not amazing. No water. That's not really doable. We need some water. About here. Or cold, cold, cold. I'm not sure about that. We I will spend a while finding the right spot for us. Very little forest here makes it not really workable. I would like some gems, but we'll see. Do, do, do. I don't think I spy anywhere that really fits the bill. We could go here. I, what I really want, and this is a bit of an ask, is basically gems plus water and temperate climate. Um, so let's just uh, regenerate. We could also just add a river here. Maybe I will do that. You can just edit the terrain like as much as you want. So now there's a river here. And then we just settle here. 4% sweet water is still not great actually. Maybe there's a maybe there's a lake here. And then a delta here and here. Funny looking little lake. Now it's kind of 20% water, 20 37% forests, some gems, some ore, some stone. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure you could call that cheating, but we could just re-roll re the game, but let's go here. Some sweet water, some mountains, some forests, some open lands. Lots of nice, diverse terrain. We need the water because one of the species we're, we're wanting to get are um, basically lizards and uh, uh, amphibians, and they like living by the water. So it's temperate, which means that cotton farms do well here. Cotton farms, sorry, cotton farms don't do that well here. 20% um, less production than they like hot areas. And mushroom farms don't do well. They like hot areas as well. Sorry, they like cold areas. Opiate farms like hot areas. This seems good. Argonian reference. Yeah, some of the... So here's the world, and it generates a world for us. It doesn't do with the kind of full history like Gore Fortress does, but you can see there's uh, these orange guy up north. Um, there is like Forex style kind of on major map diplomacy in this game. I've never really interacted with it, but maybe we will this campaign. But yeah, here we are. The Christonians, our capital. Okay. Let's do it. We're rocking, rocking here. That's quite the quote. <laughs> okay, so here is our, our world. Yeah, this looks good. Not very many... We may struggle on wood, actually. This seems bad, but that's okay. It's good to have things you're short of because then we need, we have, you know, import needs. And we're going to have to have something to sell these staggering amounts of gems that we have on. So this is what the game looks like when you're super zoomed out. Um, sorry, I should pause my... I'm watching my own stream. Um, is the stream running okay, by the way? We're running at 10,000 bitrate because I have fiber now, but it seems to be holding, which is pretty sick. <laughs> anyway, um... So where we settle is not vitally important because you can grow stuff in most places you want. What's that? Oh, these are like um, peacocks, aren't they? Yeah. All the creatures have new names, but they're basically peacocks. There's some cows up here. I mean pigs, sorry. Um, I think we want to settle around kind of here and then we'll have you know our mining settlement up north, our fishing settlement here, our, our forestry down here, but that's that's long-term thinking. Short-term, we're going to be here and all will be well. So where do we want to go more precisely? Probably, probably pretty much central, just for a kind of defensibility perspective. And you can see we're landing with some 
Oh, this is sorry, this is no, this is what's on the map. So there's no Cithrillian ore. Cithrillian ore is I'm not sure it's mithril, because I don't think you can turn it into weapons. Um but it's really rare and dwarves absolutely love it. We can see the game does have map modes. So if we look at fertility. Okay, yeah, let's let's, let's inform where we land a bit by fertility. There's a good fertile spot north and south of us. So if we settle kind of here, then we'll be able to have some early farms on that nice fertile bit. And it's really fertile near the water. So maybe actually, maybe we settle here. And then grow. Yeah, that's probably better. Let's settle here because then we're closer to, to the mountains and things. We mostly... what? <clears throat> no, I feel a bit hemmed in. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> Alright, yeah, we're going to settle here. Boom. New level unlocked. A new level has been bestowed on your name. Citizens required 30 because we had a thousand happy citizens. So here we are. We have our, uh, our 55 humans. And uh, we're all kind of crowded together. And we've got some vegetables, some wood, some stones, some rations, some clothes, and some livestock. Now, here's the interface. As you can see, it's quite small, which is good. I like a game that doesn't waste space. You can see we have all our resources on the right-hand side. And these are all the different types of items that exist in the game. There aren't that many. Um, but the thing is, different to some city builders and some of these kind of colony games, is that all of these goods are perishable. All of them. Um, so tools, for example, if you store up tools, 25% of your stool tools will decay every year. Armor, 10% of it will decay every year. Weapons, 10% decay a year. Jewelry, 1% a year. Obviously, that's quite low. Cut stone decays at 10% a year. <clears throat> so the game is not about building a dragon's hoard, although we will do that. The game is about, I mean, metal spoils 8% a year. This is a game about building... Um, production lines, sustainable production lines, ideally. So, how are we going to start doing that? Well, first off, we're going to need some food. Uh, and let's talk about what our citizens need. And this is, oh, this is an amazing part of this game. So, here are our humans. You can see here are the other seven races. Here are our humans. And they need, they have various fulfillment needs. And their fulfillment right now is 27 out of a possible 93.5. And we can see that they, uh, therefore, they have a fulfillment of 0.031. I don't quite know what calculation gets 27.5.93 out of 935 to 0.03%. Uh, interesting weights. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. But basically, they have a certain amount of happiness, right? Right now, they have a fulfillment of 0.03101. And they expect 0.1777, significantly higher. And their expectations are determined by how many of that member of this, that species there are in your settlement. So the game will steadily, linearly progress. As you get more and more people, they get more and more demanding. You have to build more and more services and stuff to accommodate them. It's a really good system. Okay, so different needs. Those needs are fulfillment needs related to population, access, services, environment, religion, occupation, and government. Um, so population needs is a subcategory. These are all subcategories. So population needs, what do they need? They need there to not be any wrongful deaths. They want to have nobles being of their species. They want to have a high portion of, of people who are born in the settlement as opposed to migrants. They don't care about uh, how many natives there are. Some people want there to be more natives. Um, they just don't like there being migrants, which feels like it could be the same stat. I'm not quite sure why they're separate, but anyway. They they dislike former slaves. Interesting. They don't care about people being ex-convicts. They like being the majority, uh, and they don't like having slaves. They especially don't like... Oh, no, they don't mind... They don't... Okay, so they really dislike having slaves of their species. They don't really dis They don't really care if you enslave other species. Okay, I've never played around with slavery in this game much. Um, we might try that out this game. And you can see that right now there are zero aspiring immigrants and we're automatically accepting up to zero aspiring immigrants. And you can see the scale of this game when I click and drag this button. <laughs> 40,000, the, 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 the kind of numbers that it thinks you're going to want in terms of population are numbered in the thousands. It's a big game. Then there's access needs. They need food, they need drink, they need equipment, they need housing and furniture in that housing. Services, they need hygiene, drinking, 
various stuff. Eating, environment. They care about the, what the environment is like. They care about whether their environment is uh, inspiring awe, whether it's well lit. Religion, they care about people following their religion. <clears throat> In general, I don't think we're gonna care about religion too much because I find it very difficult. Um, I think maybe we should... Yeah, I'd kind of rather not have these religions. Submission up and offensive skill up. I'd rather have Arthurism, who get bonuses to lots of kind of productive stuff. And uh, Craterism, who's good at like farming and things. So I think we'll probably, we'll probably do that. Um, yeah, the most, you can see we have a fairly even split of who we have right now. Uh, occupation, they like to be employed. They like to be employed in things they, that their species finds fulfilling, and different species find different things fulfilling. Not always the things that that species is good at. Uh, they want to be educated. They want to go to school. They want to retire early. And then government. They want there to be low crime. <clears throat> they want there to be equality, I think. Yeah, they want a fair treatment of races. Um, they want there to be some pardons. They don't care about exile and imprisonment. They want to be some stocking some executions and some judgment being rendered. So those are all the things they want. And basically, the, as the game goes on, you naturally find yourself being forced to meet more and more of those needs. Early on, if we feed and house them, they're living life. They love it. They have no problems whatsoever if they are fed and they are housed. So that's what we're going to focus on early on. So where is the fertile land? Let me just do this. I think there's a planning yeah planning Ooh, doo, doo. there is law it's a kind of classic high fantasy relatively classic high fantasy world i believe but i don't know uh i don't know that much so there's some land here that's pretty freaking fertile we can make it a lot more fertile by digging canals but we will be limited on the water tables we have 8141 available water table to dig canals that's a lot that'll that'll keep us going for a good long while. Um, okay, so first off, let's think about some farms. So we can see, as I said, yeah, it's pretty fertile, but we are still going to dig some canals. But first, we should probably house people first. Let's, let's work on that first. Okay, so what do we got? We got uh, 55 people. So we need... Um, oh, yeah, what kind of housing do these guys like? Let me have a look. So with building preference, is there a... There's a I forget if they like privacy. Uh, let me have a look here. Yeah, okay, I think they're fine with big houses. So there's three different types of houses you can build. Um, there's apartments, houses, and long houses. So um, the advantage of the smaller ones is obviously they're smaller, so they're easier to fit places. Um, but the bigger ones hold more people. So an apartment like this holds one person. A long house like this fits four. And the longhouse takes up uh, less than four times as much space. So, pretty simple. So, we're going to build some longhouses. They take four people each. So, we're going to need, uh, you know, 20 of. Not 20 of. <laughs> um, we're going to need, yeah, double that. Whatever this is. 12. 14. We're going to build 14 to start with. Uh, and how we lay this out early on, all this will change. So, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I'm going to leave some nice wide streets near the uh near the throne which is what that thing is so there we go there's our there's our houses it's going to take a bunch of wood to get that done um we'll see if we have enough <clears throat> but that should be good for now and we're going to dig some dirt roads as well just like this and just get the uh get the area roaded up and when i say this game runs well i'm not kidding Loyalty is decreasing. Yes, I'm, I'm working on it, I assure you. They are all swearing fealty, so they'll go and bow down to the throne. But this game runs insanely well. This is speed one. This is speed two. Look how fast the guys are moving. This is speed three. And then this is speed effectively five from Paradox Games, where it runs as fast as it can. That's freaking fast. You do not have to wait for stuff <laughs> in this game, which is good. We are out of wood already, it looks like. So let's uh, let's issue a fell tree order and just fell all these trees. We're not going to fell any forests because that's where we're going to build 
woodcutters in the fullness of time. But uh, for now, we need some wood, so we'll send some people out to, to fell trees. Okay, good stuff. And we can see they're moving in to these uh, to these houses already. Nice. You can see everyone's odd jobbers right now. We have 55, zero needed workforce, 55 employees, and hence 55 odd jobbers who just do, you know, whatever, whatever needs doing. Uh, now, the next thing we're probably going to want is a warehouse. Um, so let's put that, let's put it here, just next to We are going to make it quite big. And the way this game works is you design rooms and then you design, you often design both the room and where you want and how much you want in terms of furniture in that room, which is quite cool. And the furniture will often dictate the, the qualities of the room. So in this case, the fact that we put that many crates is going to determine both how many and uh, uh, let's remove that corner both how many and how many different varieties of items we can put in here good so we'll get them working on that warehouse and then we should also set up as I mentioned some farming so you can see the greener area here that's the fertile land yeah, like I said, I want there to be some nice wide arterial streets in the main area until we get to the farming area at least. And then let's take a look at the fertility map. Yeah, probably want to start the farming where the fertility starts getting up there. Okay, now we're going to dig some canals. Um, now longer and larger canals, more, more, more spacious canals provide higher fertility bonuses to the area around them. So Let's dig uh, some long, I think some long two-width canals are probably, probably an okay system with some small gaps. See how this goes. And then we're going to leave, well, let's, let's let them dig this. And you can see the fertility spiking as they dig it. And then we'll consider the situation. Yeah, I think three wide canals are actually going to serve us better. We'll see as soon as these this third uh, three wide one gets done, you can see just how fertile it makes the land. And then we'll think, okay, so this this is making it the four tiles needs hundred fertility. So one, two, three, four, kind of at least three squares away is pretty freaking fertile. So let's go three and then three more and then dig another three wide canal. Uh, thusly, and if we let them build that, we should see pretty much 100 fertility on this whole region and I am just gonna it doesn't cost anything to dig canals apart from time and uh, available water table so I am gonna dig this kind of whole farming area on here it's getting way further down probably because the area is just more naturally fertile so I will leave a much larger gap rather than waste waste canal usage Dig these ones for me. Broom. There they go. Look at them dig. Beautiful. Okay. Boom. So now we have a pretty big farming area. Let's get maybe one more, one more layer up here of nice fertile ground created. And look at the speed at which they can get things done. It's crazy. Okay. Good. So we have some nice fertile land. Now we want to make some agriculture. Now what do we want to make to eat? Um... Well, uh, vegetables are kind of easy early. Do we, do we have the capacity to make bakeries right out of the gate? I'm not certain we do. We do. Okay, okay. We might actually go straight to uh, gran grain then. Sure. Some grain farms in which humans are fine workers, incidentally. Uh, and ideally, we want our farms to be entirely on this nice high fertility land we've created. Oh, and it fits not that well to the space that we've made. Okay, so I will probably have grain farms like this that go just a little each side of the canals. Will that reach all the way down? It will. Indeed, it'll go all the way down there. Nice. Okay, so here's our first grain farm. So, like so. Okay, so that's 10 workers. We're probably going to want more than that to start with on grain. Well, are we? I don't know. How high can this go? Oh, I can go all the, high, all the way up. 
It will probably split this into two grain farms. Right click to undo, by the way. Oops, didn't mean to undo that far. Um, very handy, right click to undo. Do, do. Okay, we'll have these bottom ones like this in one. And we want it ideally to have a round number of farmers needed because then it will be more efficient to assign people to. So I will make it look a little janky by making it that shape. And I will take some grain to actually set up. I can turn off the fertility map mode. It will take some grain to actually set up. So where's some grain? So up here, go harvest that grain. And there's some down here. Yeah, we'll go harvest that grain. We can't harvest it until late summer, I think. Uh, yeah, we won't be able to harvest it until late summer, but we might have some already. No, we have some vegetables. Okay, so we'll set up a grain patch, but we'll also set up a vegetable patch. Uh, just so that we have something sooner coming up. But then we're going to pivot hard to grain because bread is great. Uh, bread also, yeah, it's very perishable, but... Uh, Grain, I think, is not hugely perishable. Yeah, 25% a year. Not that bad. So set up a vegetable farm as well. We'll go four tiles north of the... Oh, I appear to have built this a little inconsistently. Oh, well, we can fix that. Set this area up with some veg. Almost seven workers. That's fine. Go for it. And let's... Uh, I make my canal hotkey, control C. By the way, you hover over any button, you press H, control H, and you can set a hotkey. So useful. Here we go, two farms. I think that might be enough early on. We'll see. If it's not, uh, let me just run the road. So it's going to be four wide from here, but then probably just two wide. I will run a road. Uh, it's, is it still fertile down here? Yeah, it's still pretty fertile down here. So I'm going to run it a little bit further south. We are going to want to run a road all the way over here to the coast because we're going to do some fishing. Uh, maybe not right away, but if we need food relatively urgently, fishing is where I will turn. And yeah, up here is going to be the farming as well. Just so I don't forget, actually, let's go into planning mode and let's throw down some grain farms just where the fertility is. So like here, here, and da, da, da. and we're in planning mode, so they're not actually going to go and do this. But like here, here. Control click on a thing to actually just build another one, by the way. Very handy, very nice. This bit here is also quite fertile. Utility is very low, yes, but it won't be. It won't be when I actually build it. I just want to reserve this area. And here. This is just for me to mentally reserve this area for farms in the future. Okay, good. And we, yeah, we should, well, while I'm at it, let's do the same down here. Good. And you definitely don't have to do this when you start a game. Uh, this is just me thinking a little bit far ahead. Is this some kind of sci fi settler setting? Asks chat. No, this is medieval high fantasy type stuff. And you just joined. That's fine. I don't mind explaining it again. Yeah, it's medieval high fantasy type stuff. So farming, swords and sandals. It's not quite swords and sandals old. There is like machinery and tools, and, you know, advanced tools and stuff like that. But it's pretty basic tech wise. Okay, so food and housing. Pretty much, yeah, boulders, skylines. Pretty much all we should need um, to make our people relatively okay with life early on. Just a few other amenities that everyone deserves like a well. We're going to put a big well here in what I will now officially designate the town square, which I'm going to make a nice big area. Because we're also going to put a speaker spot. So they can visit the well, they can go and hear the news. Ah, oh, right, this should not be in planning mode anymore. So we can hit the activate job, and then you can set the things that you plan to actually get worked on. Cool. Uh, anything else I want to do really early on? <clears throat> yes, right, the bakery. We will need a bakery. And I'm going to put the bakery quite close to the, the farms. So we'll have a, a warehouse over here, which is where the farmers take their, 
their produce. Smaller one than that. Because we don't want to we don't want to store very much food. Um, certainly not early on, because it will spoil really quickly. So we're gonna have that. And I'm hitting E and uh, E and Q by the way to change the size of these. And then R to rotate. Dunk, 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 dunk. Bang. And then we want that bakery is going to be uh, right next to it. How many bakers will I need early on? I don't know. We will experiment. When you're building, you need to remember to put doors in your building, by the way. And this will need ovens. Four employees, probably plenty. I don't think I can put auxiliary ovens in here because I don't have any furniture. Oh, they don't actually use furniture. Okay. Uh, well, let's start with... Let's see how 2.4 workers goes. That might not be enough people baking. Um, we will find out together. Some storage, and then we need the auxiliary ovens, and I'm going to need... So the auxiliary... There's usually, in buildings, storage, the thing that does the work, and then auxiliaries. The auxiliaries just cost more, and they make the room more efficient. Generally speaking, there's no reason to not have all your rooms be 100% efficient. You're just wasting... Um, potential productivity if you uh, if you don't have them be uh, maximally efficient. Door here and door down here. Good. And then we'll have another work uh, storage place here to actually store the bread. Which doesn't need to be that big, actually. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. We're going to put some crates in it to hold the bread. 1,200 bread, that's that's way more than we need right now. Put some doors on, but not that many, because the isolation is... Uh, we want the isolation to be low, uh, or rather high. You want it to be 100%. Anything below 100% and the room degrades faster. Rooms are less isolated when they are less kind of enclosed. Like door, less, less walls, less all kinds of stuff. We're also going to want an eatery. I might be building too fast. Right now, we might run out of stuff, but we'll see. Uh, eatery. This is where people come and pick up pick up their meals. I don't think we need a big one right now. We need clay for this as well. Okay, we won't have an eatery for now. That's fine. Let's see if we have enough to build this. You can see them all busily building away. We did have enough wood to construct that stuff at least, it looks like. That's good. Okay, and the bakery is uh, not on auto-employment. No one should work there right now because we have no... Um, no, what do you call it? No, no grain. No grain to actually put in the eatery. And these are... This is warehouses, how you manage them. How much of each of these things do you want to put in? We have 15 crates here because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 crates. Uh, this is going to store vegetables. And so we can store 15 different things and up to 15 stacks of those things. So we're going to put seven vegetables and there's grain. There it is. Eight grain in here to start with. Good. And we're going to auto-employ, meaning that this place will find workers from between zero and 30 is the maximum you can have here. Um, in order to meet its workload needs. It will aim to keep everyone working here fully, you know, fully busy, and it will aim to keep the work that needs to be done here, done. Simple, right? Uh, good, so keep going on that. And this one is done, so we're going to get this just to store all the other basic stuff we have, like our rations, our wood, our stone, our livestock. Right, and we need to set up our... Um, some farming for livestock as well, which can be done on low fertility land, crucially. Um, just everything everything else we have can go in here. So yeah, we have some clothes. Do I have anything else in here? Not really. So yeah, just stick everything else in here. Also auto-employ. And let's get some ranching going. And I'm putting these things all, you know, a bit far from the city centre. Not that far, but a bit far just because, obviously, that's space efficient. Not space efficient, it's, it's going to allow us to expand. So, agriculture, husbandry. Now, there are a few options here. Um, the ones that we realistically have open to us, because Onyx is like uh, cold land, I think, are cows and pigs. Now, the cows produce less food, but they also produce leather. 
And the pigs produce more food, but no leather. Um, so I think we're going to go with pigs early on. I don't think we need any leather right now. So I'd rather just have more food production. So let's put, uh, let's kind of line up with, with this and then go line up with that. And we'll go, here's our first pig pasture. Do do. Nine workers with a gate kind of lined up here. Boom. And then we'll build a road down here. Boom. Like so. Good. Get to it. And we might find that we need to put some houses up closer to this place. It's going to take 100 wood. Wow, that's quite a lot. Boom. Done. And uh, we will also auto employ there. You can see here all those. Uh, we started with some livestock boxes. <laughs> Livestocks are. Uh, are fungible units. <laughs> you can you can produce livestock out of one farm and then use that to to staff another farm just fine. So we've got some people going to work up here. Uh, it looks like they're taking a bit of a bit of a janky route. So we'll put a put a road like this just to hopefully make them walk on that. You can see the basic dirt roads do increase speed by ten percent, um, but it's you can see when you go onto the build road, you can see the desire paths. You can see where people are actually walking. Color meaning more people walking there. So you see where they're actually tending to walk. And then you can adjust your roads accordingly, which I really like. So we will uh, we will do that. There you go. Now we have a road that better actually fits the needs of our people. And remove that tile and that tile. I think should smooth this out for me. Nice. There we go. So now people are actually using the road and being more productive. Good. So this thing should produce vegetables. Um, I don't know how long it will take to actually get going. The grain. Oh, we did manage to set up the grain farm. Okay. I thought we were going to have problems because we couldn't harvest this yet, but let's uh, cancel that harvest. Oh, it's already uh, it's already autumn. Okay. Um, I'd rather have way too much grain farming going on. So let's just set up just too much grain farming, and then we will disable it as needed. But bread is going to be our staple early on. It's 9.4, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8. Good. And then we'll do that again. And, uh, yeah, because if, you know, it's, it's just having farms sitting here not working is inefficient. They'll, get, they'll need maintenance, but not much. It's only six workers. Can we get it up to seven? Not really. I'm okay with that. Good. So yeah, the bakery isn't going to work. We actually do have some grain in storage, so I might as well start up the bakery. So one person is going to come and start working here, taking some of this meager stored grain in here. And there we go. He's baking. Tin Selha, the carpenter here, the human baker, is going to make some stuff for us. And... Roads in doorways is a tip that I, uh, I learned relatively recently. So I am going to do that. Good. Uh, okay. Our first piece of bread instantly eaten. <laughs> As you can see, people are getting a lot happier. Look at that. Very nice. So what are they short on? They want there to be more food stored because it's making them nervous. I don't blame them. You know what? We have a lot of odd jobbers available right now. Go harvest some of this wild food that's just lying around. Look at this. There's mushrooms up here. There's some stuff down here. Good. And I'm not hunting, which is a good way to get food early game, because it's dangerous. People will start dying. But we might start dying from hunger soon, so I will consider it. Now, we need some wood production. So let's, uh, let's build a road down here, and let's set up a a woodcutter. So woodcutters, you just set them up on trees like this, and then they get to work. I think they need furniture to... Uh, oh yes, they need furniture. Okay, done. We'll need to set up a little bit of an industrial district. Where shall I put that? Right, you need... Uh, this is a very very inefficient road being, being used right now. Let's just build that out. Okay, we need some infrastructure, some uh, some indus industry rather. We need a carpenter more specifically. Um, so let's put one, let's make this the kind of starting industrial area. 
I don't want very many carpenters working. Just, uh, just yeah, three and a bit to start with. It's fine by me. And bump up that efficiency to 100. Give me a door here and here. Good. And then we'll put a warehouse next to it, which will store, for now, just wood and furniture. And then once we've got that furniture going, we can make our wood production sustainable, which would be grand. And I'm looking forward to making this more spread out than I usually make my areas with like lots of lots of roads around buildings. Um, maybe not on this side actually. Yeah, let's change that up. Uh, I don't want a door there. I want a door here and here. Two doors is going to be too bad. All right, one door to the south. Good. And then we'll put other buildings on the, on this side. Fine. Good, so that's uh, that's that. What else would we want to make right away? Tailoring is not necessary. Uh, mining, I don't think we need to do yet. This, this baker is gonna burn uh, burn some wood. We have we have a fair amount of wood right now, so let's speed things up. And uh, yeah, should be good. Should be good. And once we get some furniture, we'll set up our first wood gathering area i am a little worried about our food production let's set up a fishing area as well just to be on the safe side we have 25 workers available to us now tip for fishing is only fish in areas with three dots um because you get far more fish per worker if you do that and typically you can fish all the three dot places on a map which is all this color and better um and once you're fishing all the three dot areas on a map then and, and better then go down to the twos and you'll you'll have You'll be at tens of thousands of people before that becomes a problem, usually. Uh, so we will fish all these three dots and all these three dots. I mean, really, we could start in one of these four dot areas and really kill it early on. So it's going to employ seven people. Yeah, let's get seven, seven fish workers working down here. And we need some storage for the fish. Area not connected. Where is not connected? Does it need to be connected by land? I don't think so. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some, ah, that takes takes furniture for the fisheries. Okay, never mind. No fishery for us, not yet. Need that furniture. Uh, and this can store. Yeah, let's just get the let's get the furniture thing built. We're building everything out of wood right now. Later, that will change. This warehouse should be auto-employed. It'll take wood and furniture. Not that much. Wood and furniture, which means this thing up here should stop accepting wood. Good. And the carpenter is going to employ five people. That seems too many. Let's go four people. There we go. Our four little carpenters busily working away, making us some furniture. We're currently producing three furniture per day. Or is that three per carpenter per day? I think no, it's 3.38 per day we're making. And if you want to get into why that is, you can read this tooltip. But for now, don't worry about it. So we've got some furniture. Let's get our wood choppers going. Wood chopper facing around these trees. We don't need very much wood early, but we do need some. Let's uh, slow down time while I'm setting this up. And I'm trying not to put it right next to the... Um, I don't know if the size actually matters. But uh, one thing that we should bear in mind is that our species likes squareness. So we should try and make our areas as square as possible. It's like this one is a bit circular right now, which is very elvish. What we want is square. The elves like circles. So it's going to make about 10 a day. Let's come down here a bit. It's, it's a lot less square with that though. So we'll do this. Make it more square. Good. That'll do. Uh, little storage up here near the top. And then some auxiliaries, which also take some... Well, no, they take furniture. So probably not worth building them right now. We will build them in the fours of time though. <clears throat> so there we go. Our new little woodcutter thing. And people like to live close to where they work. And it's obviously more efficient. So... We'll have, uh, we said eight people working here, didn't we? So we'll have eight there. 
And I'm going to make an eight fisherman thing here. Uh, was it there? Let's have a look. Yeah, it was right here. Okay, cool. So we'll put, uh, we'll put a, little, a couple of little houses. Hey, house. You know what? I should hot cut. Hot key house. That can be H. Okay, two little houses in the nook of this thing here. Okay, good. Get everything built. It's costing us a lot of wood, uh, but that's okay. There's more. There's more kind of wild trees to be felled out here. That we can deforest and get all their wood into our our short-term needs until the uh, this area is built up. Good. And yeah, so furniture is coming along. It tells us when you finish building a room. We are. Right, we may have some problems with exposure, uh, so let's look into that. Exposure, obviously, to, to the cold, because it's pretty chilly, and our people don't have very many clothes right now. So let's build some hearths. Uh, these are just, you know, communal fireplaces, basically, and we'll put one between the fishing and, uh, and woodcutting area, so people can come and warm themselves up as needed, which I'm not sure that's how that works, but... We are running chronically short on food, which trouble is troubling, troubles me. When is our uh, our first harvest of grain coming? So yeah, we should get 1.2 thousand grain this year. In fact, did we just harvest it? No. At least we certainly haven't started baking it. When are we? When can I expect this? We need this grain, and the veg isn't growing so well either. <laughs> 6.3 days until we harvest and we have one day stored of food. That's not good. That's not good. We might just completely fail. <laughs> Which would be a great way to start a series, huh? Let's get some of this level 3 fishing yoinked up. 10 people working on it to start with. Do do. And yes, it's going to take some furniture. But it's going to be worth it. One person has died. Due to the cold, yes. We should have got the, uh, the hearths built sooner. That's my bad. This has got two out of six that's needed furniture. There's the other two. Which means people should be able to come and uh, get this going soon. But yes, food is food is a problem. Maybe I do have to build a hunting thing early, just for the short term. Let's build it, uh, build it here send out six brave hunters we'll venture forth with ideally maximum efficiency but we uh yeah i should have i should have done some hunters early just to kind of tide us over because hunting is something you can do all year round and they do really go and hunt like you know the, the wild animals that are present on the map but they tend to get themselves mauled is the problem um but we'll see. All right, the woodcutter, almost done. Fishing area, almost done. Just get me the get me the hunters done because people are going to start starving really soon. All right, yeah, missing workers, probably because the fishing thing just finished. Yes, I'll do uh, just five people there for now. Let's try four on the that. Right, I didn't manage to finish building these. Ah, oh, that's where all my grain's gone so far. I was trying to build these. That's unfortunate. Um, suspend, suspend building the new ones. Right now we just need the grain. And yeah, six hunters will get allocated. We'll, we'll get allocated. Okay, there we go, good. And they'll start making me some, some meat, which we most desperately need. And as you can see, the fishermen have kicked off as well. Actually, yeah, let's prioritize fishing. We can reduce some other stuff. Like we don't really need them right now the baker isn't exactly pulling his weight is he what are people working at right now that i could cut down on <clears throat> not much i mean let's let's do a tiny bit less wood cutting there we go we've got one solitary person without a job right now ideally we want to have a bigger buffer than that but it's okay we've got some fish coming in now which we will uh store here and we're gonna have some meat coming in too oh, sorry i filled this up we go so we should uh 
Should start to get that. And we have more. We do have people willing to immigrate to us, which I know it might seem counterintuitive because we're, we're short on food. But yes, I will accept new arrivals right away. Um, because we need the workforce, basically. And yes, you can see this guy's carrying the meat up there. We do now have some of that coming in. Good, good, good. And oh yes, the fishermen and the farmers should have a... Uh, a local warehouse for their their goods. Not going to need to store that much in it. But I don't want them to uh, have to walk needlessly far to store things. So we will uh, we'll set that up here. Good. And there we go. Look at that. Meat piling in. Good. Ah, oh, yes. And also, of course, the... Uh, indolent pasture up here in the north is going to uh, start helping us there. And there we go. Veg is coming in. It's all coming up Christonians right now. There we go. Look at that. 15 days of stored food already. Huge amounts coming in. Okay. Let's, uh, let's shut down the hunters. But I'm going to leave the building here for now. We should also set up a janitor. Uh, they do basic maintenance. Let's set up down here. We only need them to be the absolute minimum size. They, uh, they repair buildings. You can see that this building here is now at 13% uh, degradation. Partly because I've given it too many doors. Let's remove that one. Get its isolation back up. How's your isolation? A bit lower, but should be better now, yeah. Good. Okay, so yeah, we'll stop hunting and we'll see how our food manages. Once these various things are, uh, are fully fleshed out, we'll be able to take a better view. But look at that, 100% happiness. Our guys are chuffed. They have low expectations, basically. Uh, got the carpentry going. Now that we do have 24 carpentry, actually, let's suspend fishing operations momentarily. To set up some auxiliaries. And I like setting these up, like, spotted along the coast. Just for the, for the visual effect of the thing. And these are basically, like, you know, extra fishing lines. A place for you to sit, maybe. All that kind of good stuff. <clears throat> Good, and done. There we go. So it's going to be fishing even faster. Good. And humans like fish, I think, right? No. So humans like eating bread, eggs, meat, and mushrooms. Am I right, fellow humans? <laughs> we hate fruit and fish. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Got loads of meat coming in. What is our meat balance looking like? So this is the, the good screen. You can see all the goods here. You can see how much you have stored and how much over time. These are in four day increments, which is one season. Uh, if you, aren't, you guys aren't familiar. Uh, and then you can see how much you're produced. So we're producing on meat specifically. We produced 55. Uh, let's go to the previous four day period. We produced 55, 33 spoiled and 31, sorry, 13 were consumed. So we're way overproducing on meat, which is good. I like to overproduce on food. It means we have room to grow. Um, it does also mean I mean, it's kind of bad, but <laughs> it's okay. We are overproducing on food, which is good because, yeah, it means we can have more immigrants. And we are... Oh, we're accepting up to 25. Sorry, I meant to say to 75. Yes, we all get annoyed immediately because the people that just arrived haven't had these wonderful environments, and these beautiful, beautiful occupations that they like doing and so on. Okay, now that we've got enough furniture for it. Ah, yes, we are short on wood, so let's crank the woodcutters and let's also throw down some auxiliaries to help out those woodcutters that we do have. 36 is going to be required for that. That's quite a lot. We don't actually have the wood for that, so I'm going to fell some more of these wild trees around here see them all go down there we go wood spiking up and there we go some grain in decent amounts so let's put what does this hold again yeah up to three basically let's put three bakers in here and see if that's actually enough uh bread to hold us steady and we don't worry about spoilage because as long as we're making enough that when people actually need it to eat they have some to eat 
that's okay. Yeah, days of food left is uh, this number here. You can see it's down to nine, but it's holding relatively steady. How much food do we have stored? And look at that, a thousand grain. Mighty, mighty grain production. Should be able to create plenty of bread. Making four a day. I think people eat one portion of food per day base you can increase it they get healthier and happier but i think the base is one portion of food a day you can see their homes look pretty basic over here it's because we haven't allowed them any furniture if you go to access here you can see that humans to furnish their homes want wood furniture cloth pottery and jewelry and again am i right fellow humans what we all lust for in life pottery jewelry cloth furniture and wood it's all you need to make your house a palace but we're not going to make the houses palaces just yet. So we have bigger problems. Uh, yeah, so this warehouse should hold wood and fish. And it isn't really a good place for it to empty to, but I'm fine with just leaving it. Well, no, let's, let's employ someone here. And then that person will just fetch stuff from the fish and oh, stick it in here. And then it can, uh, you know, when people need it. When this, when these warehouses need it, they should come and get it. Actually, they won't unless I set it to empty too. So let's actively empty the fish to this warehouse. Now, humans, as I say, prefer not eating fish. But you know who likes fish? Lizard people. Let's let some lizard people in. 25 of them. And then this housing right here. And then uh, we're going to have them take over the fishing because they're better at fishing. But if they're around humans, they'll fight because humans and these fish people do not get along. So now is the first time we're going to go into here and say, hey, fish people, I want you to basically do absolutely nothing. Since these are all their priorities. And I'm luring them all to nothing except fishing. I want you to fish like there's no tomorrow. And these guys, oh boy, they love fishing. And this house right here, this is not a multiracial home. This is just for lizards. So now the lizard should come and fish and live here. There he is. And there's two of them now. And they're going to pour in, work here, and just fish, basically. Um, but I don't want them going into town. Because <clears throat> some of the races, uh, some of the species rather, are fine with each other. Some of them are not. Uh, as you can see, actually, we're eating. <clears throat> Let's let me take a look at our bread situation. We are consuming almost exactly as much bread as we're making right now. Okay, so let's build a larger bakery across the road. Or just another bakery, perhaps not much larger. Which can sustain... Perhaps... Yeah, perhaps the same size again. we go then we have again room to grow room to grow on the food front is what we want uh but yes i like i'm going to basically try and let's build fisheries such that we have enough work for 25 lizard people and then we'll move them in to those fisheries so we want this to the other one took 10 people was it or was it seven I think it was seven, actually. So we want this to be able to provide work for 25 minus seven, which, of course, as any idiot could tell you, is 18. <laughs> 18. Good. So this is our 18 worker fishery. We will, again, just dot some auxiliaries along the way. Get that going. Get a nice road. And we'll build the roads thusly to connect everything together. Good. Now, actually, what I think I will do is I'll build the lizard village a bit further north. Maybe here. There's going to be 25 of them on there. So uh, we're going to need... Well, we haven't got the, the wood for that right now. Did I increase the workers down here? Ah, this one still hasn't been done because not enough not enough furniture. Okay. Well, you know what? 
I'm going to increase the size of our furniture operation. To a mighty 10 people. Let's see if I can get enough in here to get 100% efficiency. I already have. Bang. Give me more furniture. And one of the things you can really see about this game, which I'm really enjoying, and I think I'll make the last word for this, is how fast you can do things. You can build, like, you know, you can fill this. <laughs> you can fill this easily. And uh, you can fill it quickly. And it just feels very natural, very intuitive to build um, and to grow and to, to expand your society. It's great fun. It's great fun. I can't recommend it enough. But that is the end of episode one. Don't worry, Twitch, I'm not going anywhere. And I will see you all for the next one. This video, these videos will release probably twice a week. So look forward to the next one. And try out Song of Six, which I've got a not cool Song of Sticks, for yourself on Steam. It's cheap. There's only one dev. He's very responsive. It's a really good game. I can't recommend it enough. Anyway, see you the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.